Jeff Gold and uh, well, let's talk about that little exchange there uh, again. And you point out, regardless of what side, Alice LaViolette, she's holding her own in these kind of exchanges. Is she not, Jeff? She is holding her own. Um, I do think that at times the clips that you've played this morning where uh, she's chiding the prosecutor were a bit much for her. I think that she's amateurish mm. as an expert witness. I think she's probably very good as a speaker, and I think she is holding her own, and I think that the jury will probably see her as a, you know, a sort of kind, uh, you know, Aunt Alice. But uh, I think she goes too far uh, occasionally in chiding the prosecutor. That, it's just disrespectful to him, and I don't think it sells well. Got it. As you've been in cases and have dealt with experts, do you think to yourself, oh, oh I, don't, I don't like the demeanor here. I don't think, you know, and, I mean, are there points in a case where you're thinking as an attorney, I'm not liking the way this is going. I'm not liking the way this person's coming off. Sure, I, I think that uh, that uh, Jennifer Wilmont probably cringed when she told the prosecutor he probably needs a timeout. Right. Oh, go in the corner and wear the dunce cap. Uh, I don't think that's you know appropriate. Overall, the big point is that an expert shouldn't be a hundred percent on one side or another, unless it's an obvious uh, subject like DNA. You can be a hundred percent, but in psychology, you, to say you know I didn't really seriously think about mm. the fact. She lied to everybody after the fact, and I spoke to her after the fact. Maybe she lied to me, and I gave it serious consideration. She just poo-poos everything. Yep. That I don't like. Not giving the prosecutor anything. We're back with more. In a All right, time for another sidebar. So uh, let's bring in our expert, defense attorney Jeff Gold. Jeff, it seems Juan Martinez is blown open, but a gaping hole in Alice LaViolette's testimony, getting her to admit Travis was afraid of Jody's stalking behavior, then used her own chart to say stalking is at the extreme end of aggression and abuse. Take it from there. Well, first of all, when we saw that chart in direct, everybody suspected it's coming back in cross, and sure enough, it's Juan's big finale. Uh, you know, what's a, what's a terrorist? A murderer with a manifesto, Mike. Mm. So here you go. Um, you know, he's trying to say that Jody is the top level of that continuum of domestic violence. And a terrorist is certainly somebody that would end up killing you. So he's making huge points here now. There are substantive points. Uh, of course, I'm in the studio today, not in the courtroom right this minute, but I am sure that that jury is paying attention because every time the prosecutor or the defense gets to the substance, not talking about generalities of science, but something that really matters as to whether or not Jody Aries is guilty or innocent, they sit up on the edge of their seats and pay attention and I can guarantee you they're doing it for this testimony this is a crescendoing finale that is really making his case now the interesting thing is uh, he probably couldn't have got this in by himself in the state's case but he was able to do it through cross-examination and really Juan has done a, a pretty good job uh, technically speaking of how he's got it to this point he still has to be careful of it but he's right. scoring very big and you use the word crescendo and it built like as such, Travis is afraid of her stalking, stalking behavior on the continuum. And even she moves to Mesa. She shows up at the house uninvited. And then he says he's with another woman. He's done with the relationship while she's peering through the window. In incredible stuff. Jeff's going to be watching. So am I. So are you. We'll take a break and have more in a moment. Stay with us.